In this video, we're going to be talking about the Gauss law. Okay, here are a series of diagrams which I'm going to be using to explain some of the few concepts, and um, these are quite important as well. Okay, now what does Gauss law say? Gauss law simply um, talks about the relationship between electric fields and um, electric flux as well. Okay, now the truth is, Gauss law is actually an alternative of Coulomb's law. You know, Coulomb's law has to do with not just electric fields and force, but as well. Um, charges and the force between charges okay now so gas is also actually an alternative okay do not mistake um, when you ask the analog of gauss law okay it's different from when you have been asked the alternative okay for this case the alternative is what now coulomb's law okay now gauss law is simply saying that the net electric flux through a surface or out of a surface is equal to the enclosed charge divided by the permittivity of free space this enclosed charge Simply means the surface has to be closed for it to work now and close the charge. That is why you are seeing that for some of these diagram, even for example, when you take a look at this one, this one is an infinite line okay, of charge that is a straight line wire. Okay, we assume that there is an imaginary Gaussian surface for you to calculate the work now, the flux sheet. Okay, here is the closed Gaussian surface. Now, for this infinite plane charge, um, plane sheet of charge, we also have what now a Gaussian surface. And for this one, we did not need it because we are assuming what now charges to be what now spherical. Okay, we're going to use this information to find the electric flux and the electric field intensity through each of these what now diagrams. So, see what we're going to get. Okay, but well, first things first, Gauss law simply states that the net electric flux through a surface is equal to the enclosed charge divided by permittivity of free space. Or we could rather state it as Gauss law is saying that the electric flux through a surface is directly proportional to the enclosed charge. Okay, of which one over mu or um, epsilon naught becomes what now the constant. So I just to mix all this formula to get um, the flux and electric field intensity for each of these. We are going to uh, do that following this procedure. Okay. Now first things first, electric flux was given as Ea. Okay. We did know that electric flux was given as the light integral of Ea. Now light integral, which is closed, talks about what now? Um, a closed surface. Okay. So I'm going to have the electric flux equals E times A. Okay. After um, integrating okay now for a sphere what is the area the area of a sphere is given as 4 pi r squared okay and then k remember we did electric field uh, intensity okay we talked about electric field so if you haven't learned that i think you should as well watch videos on that okay still on our page so that you can come back and understand this one better so electric field okay electric field is equal to kq divided by r squared we'll substitute both we get flux is equal to kq divided by r squared okay times area is 4 pi r squared r cancels r so i left with flux is equal to 4 pi kq okay so the electric flux for a point charge is 4 pi kq okay here is the formula for solving for it okay 4 pi kq now what you notice is that the radius of the sphere was not even included this means that electric flux for a point charge does not even depend on the radius, but rather it depends on the enclosed charge. Okay, key here represents what's now enclosed charge. Now, how about the electric field intensity? The electric field intensity can be calculated as well. Okay, we already said that Ea, which is the electric flux, okay, Ea right, is also equal to enclosed charge divided by permittivity of free space. So we have enclosed charge, um, rather, Q divided by permittivity of free space, okay? So I'm going to have electric field intensity is equal to Q divided by A times E naught. Now what's A? A remains um, 4 pi r squared, okay? That remains the value for A. A remains 4 pi r squared, so we could as well write this as Q divided by 4 pi r squared E naught, okay? So I'm going to come here and I'm going to write E equals Q divided by 4 pi r squared E naught, okay? So for point spherical charge, to calculate the electric field intensity, we mix it with this formula, and then for the electric flux, we mix it with this as well. Now, how about this guy, okay? It's going to be similar, and we make it of the area, okay? So if we're having electric flux is equal to integral of Ea, okay? This reduces to electric flux times area, of which the area of this surface okay for um, a cylinder we're going to be dealing with the surface area so the surface area is 2 pi rl right so i'm going to have electric flux is equal to e 
times 2 pi rl okay so from here we do know that e is kq over r squared if i substitute i'm going to get electric flux um is kq divided by r squared times 2 pi rl okay r cancels r so this gives us um 2 pi l kq divided by r okay i think that makes sense so i can just come here and write 2 pi l kq divided by r okay um this formula is quite tedious so you might not be able to plan it okay so most times you might just want to use enclosed charge very bad permittivity of free space okay? we just come here and write it enclosed charge very bad permittivity of free space now how about the electric field intensity okay how about the electric field intensity let me write somewhere here so the electric field intensity in this case let's see what we're going to get so how are we going to get the electric field intensity okay from here we said electric flux is ea and it's also equal to enclosed charge divided by permittivity of free space right and the area is um 2 pi r l which is q divided by e naught so e is equal to q divided by 2 pi r l e naught now here's something you need to know we're having q over l q over l has um, a different name okay it is called the electric field line okay charge density okay so q over l is represented as lambda okay it is a charge density there are different um charge density basically theory. we have q over l okay which is the line um density um charge density rather we have q over a which is the area charge density or surface charge density and then we have q over v which is what now volume charge density okay so q over l can be represented as what now um lambda we're going to have e is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi r e naught okay so we can come here and see the electric field intensity okay for this guy is equal to 2 pi or rather lambda divided by 2 pi r e naught okay so that's how it's been done and then for the last one we also asked to calculate the um electric flux and electric field intensity now for the electric flux it is simply the same thing okay proving any formula like this will still um be something you can't really cram okay so you just have to know that it's q over a naught okay you don't have to cram it so have q divided by e naught okay that's the electric field flux now how about the electric field intensity we're going to prove that okay now um when it says flux is equal to e a and it's q over e naught okay now um from here the next thing we're going to do, we're going to calculate the flux at both surface, both sides of the infinite plane sheet. Okay, so we're having an end here and an end here. So we're having a flux coming out from here and then a flux entry here, or a flux coming out from here and then the flux entry here. Okay, so we're having what now two surfaces out of the cylinder, right? So since we're having two surfaces, it means we're going to have two of this equation. It is says that phi now becomes phi one plus phi two. In that case, we're going to be having phi to equal what becomes ea it becomes two times one of this right so i'm going to have two times ea equals q over a naught or for simplicity sake you can just say okay since there are two areas okay that is two sides of the areas we're going to multiply the area by two okay so from here to get e e now becomes e is now equal to q divided by two a e naught okay now how about the area the area of a cylinder still remains um, what? 2 pi L, L, right? We have E is equal to Q over 2 times um, 2 pi R L E naught. Okay? 2 pi R L E naught. Okay? Or if we start expanding it, since we know we are going to be leaving our answer in terms of um, area charge density. We as well write it as e is equal to sigma divided by 2 e naught. I think this will make more sense. Now, sigma here simply means charge over area, okay? That is the surface charge density, okay? So e here is equal to what? Surface charge density divided by 2 e naught, okay? That is how it is being done. 
So in our next video, we'll be solving a problem on Cow's Law, okay? That is how it is being done. Do wait to like, share, and subscribe to your friends. And don't click on the notification bell so that when a new video is being uploaded, you'll be one of the first persons that you're notified, okay? See you in the next video. Stay tuned.